Hey third graders, welcome back to art class. It's Miss Mitchell. Last week we looked at an artist named Sandra Soberswig and we started some portraits. So we are going to review Sandra's artwork and then continue on with our portraits. Last week we looked at the artist Sandra Soberswig. So we're going to do just a little bit of a review on her and then get back into the project that we started last time. So this is Sandra Silverswig right here, and she was born and raised in the 1960s. She's from Toronto, Canada, and Canada is in red on the map right here. So we talked about her condition that she has called synesthesia. Synesthesia is when the brain joins or mixes the senses together. So for example, you can taste words or see sounds. Her artwork is inspired by an artist named Pablo Picasso. So Pablo Picasso's artwork is on the left right here and Sandra's is on the right. You can see they are similar because they're very abstract. They don't look like real life. Uh, the faces are kind of wonky looking. Here's some more of her artwork. We talked about her use of line. She uses bold black outlines, and the shapes that she uses are asymmetrical. Asymmetrical means they're not the same, so different shapes on each side of the face. The head is usually U-shaped, and the nose is an L shape. So it can be a regular L, or it can be a backwards L. Her use of color is also asymmetrical. That means different colors on each side of the face. For example, there's orange on this side, but there's red on the right side. There's blue on the left side. There's green on the right side. So that's asymmetrical, not the same use of colors on both sides of the face. She also uses bright colors. And so the bright colors are right here. You can see it there. They stand out versus muted colors like this. They're very dull looking. And she uses a variety of patterns. That means a lot and a lot of different kinds of patterns. And these patterns fill up the space. Notice her use of pattern fills up everything. We also talked about intermediate colors. Intermediate colors are when we use a primary plus a secondary to mix together to create that intermediate color. So just like one plus two equals three, primary plus secondary equals intermediate or tertiary. We talked about tertiary being another word for intermediate. So the ones that the arrows are pointing to, those are the intermediate colors. Again, the names of those intermediate or tertiary colors are the names of what makes it up. So red plus violet equals red violet. Red plus orange equals red orange. Blue plus green equals blue green. We then talked about analogous colors. Analogous colors are three or more colors next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, yellow, yellow orange, and orange are analogous because they are right next to each other. If I said violet, what are two other colors that are analogous to violet? There are several options here. We can go upwards this way. We can say violet, blue violet, and blue. We could go this way. We could say violet, violet red, and red, or we can have violet be in the middle. So blue, violet, violet, and violet, red. Let's do one more example. What if I said blue, green? So two analogous colors to blue, green are, if we go upwards this way, it would be green and yellow green. If we went downwards this way, it would be what? Blue green, 
blue and blue violet. And the last way we could do it would be to have blue green in the middle. So green, blue green, and blue. Okay, so those are analogous colors next to each other on the color wheel. You don't skip over one, you don't skip all the way to the other side. They are right next to each other. So let's get back to the artwork that we started last week. Last week, we drew a portrait in the style of Sandra Silverswig. We used lots of different patterns to fill up that space. This week, we are going to color everything in. So this week is just all about coloring. Before we get to the coloring, I do want you to outline everything in black. So you might have a black marker, you might have a black color pencil, or a black crayon. Use whatever you have available to you. I am going to use a marker. And again, she uses bold black outlines. So everything that you've done in pencil, you are just going to trace over with your black marker, crayon, or colored pencil. Make sure when you're doing this that you take your time. Remember that art is not a race to finish first. We like to take our time so that everything looks nice and neat. If you go too fast, then you might mess up and you cannot erase marker, you cannot erase crayon or colored pencil. So make sure that you take your time. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up for you guys so that you can see the finished product before I start coloring everything in. Alrighty, I finished outlining everything in black. You can see how everything stands out so much nicer now that I have outlined in black. And now I get to color everything in. So we talked about our intermediate colors and using those intermediate colors within our analogous color schemes. So I want you to make those analogous color schemes using your intermediate colors. For example, if I have red here, what are two colors that are analogous to red? We have red and red-orange and orange. Okay, now if you have the red-orange color, you are welcome to use it. If you don't, if all you have is red and orange, then you can use these two colors to make your red-orange. I will show you that. So I'm gonna start here on my nose just as an example. I have red. I'm gonna go upwards like this. And I have orange. And it, make sure you're using the correct red and orange. Make sure it's not a yellow orange. Notice how this one says yellow orange. We don't want to use yellow orange right now. We just want to use plain orange. So if you're using crayons, make sure you check the name on the crayon, the label on the crayon. So once again, I'm using orange over here and I'm using red here. 
and I want to make my red orange right here in the middle between these two colors. So I'm going to start with orange. I'm going to color this whole thing orange. I'm going to make a mental note in my head that I'm going to stop right here. But I'm going to color this whole thing orange just like this. Orange is a little bit lighter than red, so that's why I'm starting with orange. Okay, and I'm making a mental note that this is where I want my red to stop. But now, this part right here is what I want to be red-orange. So I've colored orange first, and I'm going to then layer my red crayon on top of my orange. And that is how I make my red-orange. So if you don't have a red-orange crayon, you can still make those intermediate colors with just a regular red and just a regular orange. So notice my use of analogous colors. I have red, red-orange, and orange. You can notice that this orange is a little bit lighter in color than this red-orange. So I want you to use your analogous colors to color your portrait. You don't have to use analogous colors in every single spot, but I would like you to have at least three spots on your portrait that show analogous colors. So for example, I did this spot right here, my nose, with analogous colors. I might do my face right here, in analogous colors. I could do one of my eyes in analogous colors. The rest of how you color is up to you. Like I said, you don't have to use analogous colors everywhere, but I want you to use it in at least how many places? Three places. It might help you to get those three places colored in first, and then you can color in the rest of your portrait however you want to. But again, I would suggest coloring in those three spots first before you color everything else. That way you have the analogous part knocked out and you don't have to worry about that anymore. So another spot that I might do, like I said, I might do my eyes right here. So I'm starting with blue. And I'm going to go, I have blue, blue, violet, and violet. If I don't have this blue-violet color, then I'm going to use my blue and my violet to make that blue-violet. So make a mental note of where you want your two colors to end and where you want them to meet. So I'm going to have my blue and my violet meet right here. And then I'm going to layer my violet on top of my blue to make that blue violet. Again, make sure your colors are in order. That means should I have blue violet and then violet and then blue? Is that in order? No. We want to make sure it's in order. So, well that's not even blue violet. Um, make sure they're in order. So your intermediate color is in between the two colors that make it. I'll say that again. Your intermediate color is in between the two colors that make it. So I have blue, blue, violet, and violet. So that's my part of my eye right there. And I'm just going to speed up the rest of this video. So that's my Second part with analogous colors, I'm going to choose one more spot really quickly and do that for you. So I'm going to choose green, green, yellow, and yellow. Again, make sure they are in order. All right, this is my third spot with my analogous colors, yellow, yellow, green, and green. I mixed my yellow and my green together to get my yellow green. 
I will speed up the rest of this video so that you don't have to spend forever watching me color. This is my finished artwork, my finished portrait inspired by artist Sandra Soberswig. So you can see how much color I added to it. Um, remember once again to use analogous colors in three parts of your portrait. So the three parts that I used analogous colors were right here on the nose, on here on the other side of the eyebrow, and this part of the eyes, the eyelid right here. Once again, those analogous colors are three colors next to each other on the color wheel. Everything else, I just use whatever colors that I wanted to fill in those patterns. The very last thing I want you to do when you finish coloring your artwork is to take a five second video of it on Canvas and submit it through Canvas. If you do not know how to take a five second video of your artwork, there is a video tutorial on the assignments page. So go to your art classroom, go to the assignments tab, click this week's assignment and watch that video tutorial of how to make a five second video of your artwork. Make sure you hold it still, don't move it around, otherwise I won't be able to see it. Once you have made your five second video and clicked the submit assignment button for this week, then you are good. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.